This is Randy Hinkin, one of the managing directors and co-founders of Blue Frontiers, and I'm here with my good friend Robert Viglione, who is an advisor to us and also the founder or co-founder of Zencash. And Rob's going to tell us a little bit about why he's chosen to be involved in Blue Frontiers and Seasteading, and his history with Seasteading is actually, what year did you first get involved in Seasteading? 2014 as an ambassador. Okay. And, 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 what, and what brought you into wanting to be an ambassador of the Seasteading Institute? I have to say what, what Seasteading is doing is going to be the next frontier for, I think, human expansion and just the betterment of human well-being, um, social social uh, utility across the board from economics to just you know promoting a world a more peaceful world so really all of the, all the values that I personally have and why you know me is kind of my my background is uh, is a libertarian and just wanting to see more peace and freedom around the world I thought we're being embodied in seasteading so that was what really drew me to the project but then as I started to get to know these guys it became the actual community and people on the team that I cared more about I mean well the values are amazing of course but it, values are cool but it really comes out to people and values draw good people and these values in particular I think have drawn, drawn the best people so. Right. well so we um, were fortunate to have you come to Tahiti to the first Tahitian sea setting gathering last year and you brought your lovely wife Rosario yeah. who's also a founder of, of Zen yeah. Cash yeah. And, uh, and she tells a story about um, not being sure what she was going to find in yeah. this group. Maybe you want to recount that for us. <laughs> exactly. So uh, Rosario has heard me for years talk about some pretty crazy things like Bitcoin. Uh, and then when she heard, heard me talking about Steady, she thought, this is another crazy idea. What, what are you doing? Um, and. And I said, well, there's this conference in Tahiti I, I want to go to. And I had this amazing opportunity to speak. And she said, well, you go hang out with the crazy people. I'll just go and lay on the beach in Tahiti. And um, she said, there's no way you're going to Tahiti without me. And she came. And then she actually met that met the people at the conference and met the people on the team and heard some of the talks and said, wow, this is pretty amazing. They're, they're still a little crazy, but um, they're doing some amazing stuff. And they're actually capable of pulling it off. So yeah, that was that was kind of a turning point for her, where she thought, well, okay, Bitcoin turned out not to be too crazy, um, and now seasteading is turning out to be not too crazy either. And I think both have an amazing future. Why, why don't you tell us a little bit about uh, about Zincash? And sure, sure. What, what you've done this last year? We, we went to the, uh, the we're we're actually speaking to you from Consensus, which is a giant giant yeah. Bitcoin blockchain cryptocurrency conference in New York yeah. City with probably like nine thousand people. But uh, two nights ago. Uh, Rob and Zincash hosted their first anniversary party. Yep. It was also very well attended. Yep. Uh, tell everybody what, what is Zencash, why, why'd you make it, how's it going? Sure, sure. So I'll say uh, Zencash itself, the whole cash thing is a bit of a misnomer because uh, Zencash is really our first application and really we're, we're building out a whole platform. We're building out a platform that takes user privacy and security as its fundamental premise. So everything we're doing from, we, we leverage some very sophisticated cryptography uh, called Zero knowledge cryptography uh, where we we basically give users full control of their data uh, so really the way that I look at us and what we're doing with Zen is we're creating a very secure environment where individuals control their own data and then we're building out a whole kind of application layer on top of that so we're doing really cool stuff with blockchain technology we're doing amazing stuff with cryptography but really these are just tools for the long-term um, use case here the long-term value proposition is giving individuals control of their data again uh, and, and doing this in a way where now once they have control of their data and in a way that's private and secure, now they can start monetizing this or using their data in different ways to make their lives better. So like one example that I like to give, which is maybe a little bit longer term out there, is I would love to create a universal basic income that's derived from individuals basically uh, harvesting their own data that they generate on a daily basis anyway. And I like to imagine a future where you have a kid in Bangladesh who now, because they can harvest their own data, they can earn a few hundred dollars a month just by exploiting their own data instead of having companies exploit it for them. So that's really where we came from with Zen. We're doing very interesting things in the blockchain space. We're run like a, a lean startup and R&D incubator where we're looking, doing forward-looking stuff to try to kind of maximize or expand the, the technology frontier for this industry. But the way that I look at the technology, and I try not to talk about that too specifically itself, is because it's a tool set 
but really it's on the product side and the ecos ecosystem side and the real like real world use case of how do we make people's lives better that I think is much more interesting. Right. And, and so just a year ago it was an idea you've been working on with a white paper and, yeah. and I, I've heard yeah. even, right, I know even that uh, yeah. Joe Quirk is quoted in your white paper. He is, exactly. And so you can see my, my, my love of seasteading from the start here um, and I'm so happy that we're working together and officially now our organizations. Um, to me, this is a dream come true. Uh, what we're doing on the, the digital side, you guys are doing in the real world side and making the world better and experimenting with kind of uh, social startups or kind of how, do, how do we redesign society from scratch in a way that I think will yield so many benefits for the future. So I was so happy to work with guys and you can see just from quoting Joe in, in our white paper. Sure. Yeah. And, and so we have a strategic you know, partnership with Zencash yeah. and, and one of the things we're doing initially during the the time of our uh, our crowd sale of Varian is we're letting Zencash people, uh, Zencash holders, yep. buy Varian at a discount at a uh, cheaper price than, than the uh, well, so, so many fans for Rob here. So if, if you're a Zencash holder and you want to uh, buy in buy Varian, you can do so at a lower threshold than you would with Ethereum or Bitcoin to get a larger bonus uh, during the pre-sale. Uh, and then I'm sure we'll find other ways to continue our strategic partnership. You know, yes. long after the crowd sale is over. Over. Yeah. Uh, there was something that we were together in, uh, we've been together in Dubai, uh, Zurich, Zurich, Liechtenstein, Liechtenstein. Uh, yeah. Yeah. In, in Zurich we, we had a, a, a little meet up for seasteading and, and you gave a presentation about Zencash and but you said something about seasteading that I thought was really um, important or powerful or I really liked it, it was basically yeah. talking about how the, 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 the very first seastead is the first one yes. and how that's going to turn out, maybe you want to... Yeah, no, I, I'll, I'll, say, I'll say it again, is um, right now to a lot of people they just, they can't, the, the imagination doesn't see seasteading. And it's going to be so difficult for us to get the first C stead. Um, but and I say that where maybe maybe that's already five years old that comment because I think the team's already done such a good job to make sure the first C stead is going to happen. But the difficulty to go from zero to one is exponential. From one to two, it's going to be cut in half. You know, from two to five, it'll still be difficult, but you know it'll be challenging, but much much more predictable and you know systematic. But then it'll jump to a thousand overnight. Um, because I think that this is an idea that's massively scalable and as soon as people see that it works and it functions well and we're not say destroying the aquatic environment, we're not creating some you know, anar you know Mad Max uh, future of chaos, we're actually bringing people together peacefully and, and so productively and making you know just society function better. I think then it's going to scale, it's going to go off the chart with scalability. I agree. I think that we're, uh, you know, we're, we're on to something that uh, is, yeah. is is new now, and, and some people think it's you know, crazy or they can't understand it, and they, they might want to dismiss it. Yeah. Um, you know, last night I met a young man at a uh, at one of the parties here in New York City, and I was telling his mom, uh, I was talking to him and his mom, yeah. and uh, and she she got it, she lit, lit up, and she's like, oh, this is pretty cool. But yeah. then her son, who's in his 20s, he's like, I know all about this project. <laughs> I totally want to get involved. And, awesome. and so you, you can yeah. tell, like, if, you know, if the youth sees, yeah. you know, what's cool and what's hip, you know, uh, you know, some of us that are on the other, the yeah. older side might want to, yeah. you know, follow Happy along. Happy birthday, by the way. Oh, thank yeah. you, thank you. I saw the push-ups. That's oh, great. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. Put me to shame. Yeah, you'll, you'll, I bet you can do more than me. No, no. Okay. Um, yeah. So I think that uh, you know there, there's a, a value proposition that's available to people who get yeah. in early. Yes. Um, and I think that you know we, with, with um, Blue Frontiers having a full year behind it, a team of 15 people, yeah. the hundreds, some professionals, all the great advisors like yeah. yourself. Um, and then, of course, behind that, the CSA Institute having 10 years of, of research and you know, yeah. millions of dollars of work they've done. Yeah. Uh, we are on the cusp of the very first CSA. And if we have a successful crowd sale, then we should anticipate seeing CSAs. Yeah. Um, first one, then two, yep. then a dozen, then a thousand, then a thousand. Yeah. 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 yeah, exactly. And I, I echo your sentiment completely. In fact, I've seen the same thing in the blockchain space and in cryptocurrencies. Is, um, to convince our generation to use cryptocurrencies or seasteads, it, it's a tough battle, you know, because you have, and to convince the, the generation that came before us to adopt this stuff, it's even even worse, because they're just used to a system that's completely different. Um, and, it, you know, different sometimes is scary for people, but it's the next generation 
generation or the generation behind that, the kids who are in their teen, teens now and the kids who are, you know, from zero to 10 or whatever we call that batch, I don't know. Um, they're going to see this stuff and it's just going to make sense to them. And they're not going to be able to imagine the world that we had in the past. Um, they were so kind of like stove pipe, so many artificial like walls, barriers, frictions to doing very basic things in society, right? That, so yeah, the future is, is going to be where this stuff makes sense. And I think what we're building now lays the, the framework there. So like you said, um, for the, the people that can see the vision now, I think there's so much upside. And I'm not just talking economic upside, but just to be part of something that's going to actually make such a big impact in the world is really special. Right. Yeah, it's a real yeah. pioneering time. Yeah. Yeah. You know, Rob, you've been a, a great advisor and we've been really lucky to have you uh, on, on the path of this nice. past uh, you know, four years and, and especially this last year and, and, and the past several months as we've tried to uh, you know, get, get Varian out into the wild. Is there uh, anything else you would want to share with uh, people who might just be meeting you for the first time in the, uh, in the sea setting world? Yeah, I, you know, what I, what I like to always leave off with, and I think that people that tune into these these types of, um, you know, shows, they uh, they have the interest already, and oftentimes people just sit on the sidelines and they watch, and I think that's cool, we need support, absolutely, um, but I encourage people to don't, don't watch history unfold as a bystander, be part of it, come join us. And, and, and you might be able to join us in a tropical lagoon <laughs> uh, within a year or less at one yeah. of our first events. And we could be your neighbors. Yeah, I want to be neighbors. Neighbor, Randy's neighbor. That's. <laughs> I, I would. I, I, I look forward to being your neighbor. Yeah. Good. Right. Thank you, man. I appreciate it. All right, thanks, Randy. It's a beautiful day in the neighborhood. A beautiful day for a neighbor. Would you be mine? Would you be mine? It's a neighborly day for a beauty hood. A neighborly day for a beauty. Would you be mine? Would you be mine?